One of the best things about the developments of the aviation industry is the many shifts seen in focus at aircraft manufacturers through the years. With the growth in, say, strategies, this change in aircraft designs, and so many further adjustments, we've been lucky enough to see developments regarding the kinds of aircraft built. But not all planes that hit the drawing board actually get released, and some purely remain as concepts, and that is where the Boeing NLA comes into the equation. The Boeing NLA, New Large Airplane Program, was a concept developed by Boeing in the late 1990s and early 2000s to explore the possibility of creating a new advanced commercial airliner that would rival existing long-haul aircraft and address some of the market demands that were being seen. It would also act as a way to compete with the A3XX program being studied at Airbus, which would later turn into to the A380. While the NLA never reached the production stage or really got off the drawing board, so my apologies for the lack of actual footage or imagery of this conceptual aircraft, it was still pretty pivotal in Boeing's strategic planning and paved the way for future aircraft development efforts. This is very much a statement that rings true about several concepts created throughout the decades. While these concepts may not get off the ground, their studies can be precious to other eventual released types. The Boeing NLA's program primary objective was to cater to the airline's ever-changing needs with a new large airplane. At least this is what they believed to be the perfect option for these customers. Boeing did want to extend its grip on the long-haul sector and fend off emerging competition. The NLA would be able to accommodate 600 or so passengers in a three-class configuration. The aircraft's overall length Length would be substantial with a 79.25 meter wingspan. The Boeing NLA targeted a 7,800 nautical mile or 14,400 kilometer range and would be powered by four General Electric GE90s, that is the same engine on the 777s per the Seattle Post. Ultimately, however, the range and overall capacity specifications that I did just outline would very much be subject to change. If this plane was to be hypothetically released, well, customers would kit the plane out how they see fitting, so we would see adjustments in overall capacity. And with that, these specifications you would imagine would fluctuate. Take what Boeing identified as merely guidance, and that is all it is. One of the biggest noticeable design features would have been in the form of a double deck for the NLA. Yes, that's right. To be able to achieve the increase in capacity over the 747, Boeing would have removed the iconic hump, or should I say extended it, by stretching the top deck right to the tail. Very similar in design to what eventually we would be introduced to with the A380, but this NLA would have basically been a double decker had it progressed. With the mission of targeting long haul routes primarily, Boeing Boeing wanted their NLA to slot into this market seamlessly and take on the role of that. At the time, the American plane maker believed the twin-engine aircraft were unable to complete the required missions that an NLA could. But why did Boeing initiate the NLA program to begin with, especially considering all that was happening around the time frame regarding conceptual aircraft and the significant shift the customers were seeing in their overall desires for planes? Well, Boeing believed there was a need to offer a successor to the 747, and this was a series that just wasn't getting getting any younger at some carriers. The 747 had been an icon of the skies, however the plane had also really changed fundamentally how long haul travel was completed, and Boeing had worked up a pretty firm grip on this very long haul market and believed it could retain its market share with a totally new revolutionary design. Additionally, discussion of an NLA followed Airbus's continued persistence in releasing their own Super Jumbo. It was really important for Boeing to continue keeping keeping a watchful eye on how the European plane maker progressed with their own studies, and it was in Boeing's best interest to study ways themselves to fend off any potential attempts from Airbus to take market share away from Boeing that it had accumulated over a multi-decade process. So with that being said, the NLA was really targeted at replacing the 
747, but also competing with what would be the A380. And ultimately, these quad-engine super jumbos from Airbus and Boeing were focusing on a similar customer base. As we know, with the eventual release of the 380 and the soon-to-be 7478, these planes would really struggle to attract the amount of orders and respective interest that maybe the plane makers would have initially anticipated, or should I say, would have liked when they were initially studying it. As we sit here today, we know that Boeing never released the NLA, but why? Many would have loved to have seen a full double-decker Boeing aircraft. Well, there were several vital reasons that can be directly attributed to why this quad-engine plane failed, but also why many others really failed to get off the drawing board. Yes, I'm looking at your 747X and such. Boeing ultimately believed that the NLA just wasn't sustainable, given how industry trends were heading. As touched on, companies were targeting twin-engined fuel-efficient aircraft types. And yes, it must be said that the NLA did promise customers a lot. It did lack also in significant areas that were just as crucial. Thanks to the shifting trends, Boeing was unable to really get a good gauge for customer interest. Given if this had proceeded, it would have been a pretty large investment and Boeing would have needed to do it right and also have the backing from customers. Without that backing from customers, well, the large amount of resources and funds allocated to the program would be pointless as it would end up being a commercial failure. For Boeing though, not progressing with the NLA is what many would say is the right decision for the ever-changing market. While the plane maker would release one more iteration of the 747 series, that being the Dash 8 in the 2000s, you would say that Boeing maybe read the shifting industry a little bit better than Airbus. Boeing were able to get, remember, their 787 Dreamliner, labelled as a true game changer, away quicker than Airbus with their own twin-engine planes, who instead of getting their A350 out early, which, yes, has been a massive success since launch, while the European plane maker was struggling with their own world's largest passenger plane, the A380, which, as we know, has had a bit of a turbulent time in the industry since its introduction. That is going to conclude today's analysis on the Boeing NLA. If you have absolutely any thoughts, you are more than welcome to drop them down below in the comments. Thank you very much for your support here on the channel. It really does mean a lot. If you would like to see more analysis like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Please do take care and also be safe. Stay tuned and I'll see you in a couple of days for more aviation analysis. And flight, and we'll fly.